Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you guys doing? All right, so we got some people trickling in here. Um, just while, for those of you who are already in, if you can let us know in the chat if you can hear us um, and see us. Yes, Kate says yes. Please, Katie, yeah. in perfect. Yes, good. I think we're increase the volume. Increase the volume. Is that a little bit better? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Let's try to keep the volume here. Okay, cool. All right, so we're really excited everyone's able to join us today. Um, this is Shelly. I'm with Shelly today, uh, our business success coach. If you guys don't know her yet, um, she's fantastic. I know a lot of you guys get to do some one-on-one -on -one calls with her where she'll walk you through whatever you have trouble with. She's just a, a wealth of knowledge. So we're really excited that she's here with us again. Thanks for having me. You know, uh, <laughs> so today we're going to be diving into protocols, um, and recommendations. Uh, we been taking feedback at the end of our deep dives and you guys have been telling us that you want to know more about how to use these features. So that's why we really want to dive into them today and really look at all the nooks and crannies and, and make sure that you're optimizing your use of these and making sure that, you know, you're not, you're not doing the same tasks over and over again if you don't have to. All right. So without further ado, I'm going to turn my camera off and share my screen with you. Um, and then we're going to get going. Um, also, too, if you have questions, uh, throw them in the chat, and we are going to do our best to answer them as they come up, or, and if not, we'll do the, our best to answer them at the end. All right, can everyone just tell me that they can see this chat as, uh, not this chat, sorry, that they can see the screen? Perfect. I think we're good to go. All right. That's All right. Good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Loud and clear. All right. So what are protocols? Um, essentially, a protocol is a framework or a guideline to help your clients reach their health goals and overcome their health challenges. So you may use different words in your own practice, but this could be your plan, your recommendations, your suggestions, programs, homework, whatever you want to call it. Um, protocols, they can start out fairly general, but are intended to be personalized for each client based on their health conditions and then the goals that they're wanting to achieve. So we created these features for a few important reasons. Um, one of them is writing up your recommendations can be really time consuming, especially because you may find yourself making the same recommendations over and over again. Another thing is that was the fight to get the formatting right is often a never ending battle and takes time. Um, it also needs to be very clear, organized and easy to access for clients. Um, so if they can't find the protocol or they can't understand it, they're not going to follow it. And then, of course, we wanted to prevent clients from losing their protocols. So it's very easy to find their protocols in their portal. So protocols can be broken down into five sections. So we have the food recommendations, we have supplement recommendations, lifestyle recommendations, supporting documents, and lastly, notes for anything else such as guidebooks, meal plans, recipe guides, anything else that you want to add to the protocol, you can put into the notes. Um, so you can use as many of these sections as you need based on the focus and the goals of the program that you're working on with your client. Yeah, and that's a good point to talk about is that if you are using protocols, um, like Shelly mentioned, you can use as many of these sections as you need. So if you're not particularly working with or you're not working with supplements, for example, um, then you can just completely omit that section and it won't show up in the protocol for your clients. If you're not using food recommendations, um, then you can omit that section and, and it won't show up. So let's look at the actual protocol. So we're going to actually jump into protocol templates. So if you were with us on our note and uh, template deep dive, this is similar. This is where, like Shelly said, you, you create that, that framework for your recommendations and then you're using them uh, over and over again. 
either reusing them as they are or you're modifying them to uh, individualize them to a client, but you're starting with a framework to save yourself a lot of time. So when you come into protocol templates for the first time, this is gonna be empty, okay? So you're gonna build your own protocols exactly how you want to practice. Um, so you're gonna click on the red button in the bottom right hand corner, and this is an empty template, okay? So I'm actually gonna walk us through one that's been created, so that way we can talk about it and see it, um, and see like a real life example. All right. So this is a protocol template that we created. This is just a demo. Um, it's not like don't don't go and take this this <laughs> these these suggestions and use them for any particular reasons. We just you know it's just to show you an example. But you're gonna first name your protocol, right? And what we do recommend is when you're creating a protocol or a protocol template for a client, we recommend starting with smaller protocols and adding on as your client is ready to take on more. So rather than overwhelming them, you know, start with a little bit and add on um, as they're ready for that. So you need to name your protocol. So this is this one here I called getting started, right? It could be gut health. It could be, you know, hormonal balance, whatever that might be. The focus really is what the client is going to see, what's going to be prominent to them. And it's going to tell them what's the point of this protocol? Why am I doing this? What am I focusing on? So in this instance, they're just focusing on choosing better foods and getting better sleep. Okay. Yeah. So um, we recommend making this protocol shorter in duration for a couple of reasons. One, so that your clients are equipped with all the information that they need between sessions to be successful. So using these protocol templates allows you to be more detailed and thorough without requiring more of your time. Also, so that clients know that this will or may change over time. Um, also, so that it's less intimidating for the client if they think about these big changes as short term, even if it's not, it helps them see results and build some momentum before adding on or adding another protocol. Um, also, so clients don't feel like they've got all the information that they need to solve whatever health concerns they may have, and then they might stop following up with you. Yeah, and I think that that's a really good point, Shelly. Like, how many people here have given their clients too many recommendations in the beginning, um, and then they've, one, either gone radio silent, they've just fallen off the face of the earth, um, or that you we've given them too much information and now they think, hey, I've got all the answers, I don't need you anymore. Yes, Kate, yes, Christy, yes. Kate, yes. Milan, yes. All right. Ellen, yes. All right, so we're seeing this. Oh yeah. Is not, <laughs> oh yeah, this is not uncommon and I have to say, I experienced this a lot myself. Shelly, did you get this too? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Yeah, so keep it short. So this is why we can keep the recommendations down. We don't have to give, overwhelm them. Um, and then we just add on. And we'll talk about adding on um, a little bit later. But, you know, again, we just recommend, up to you, it's your practice, but we recommend um, starting with a short duration so they know they're following up with you. They know if they need the next steps, they need to come back and see you. Protocol notes, as, as Shelly mentioned earlier, you can use this, these protocol notes for anything. You can use them for anything that doesn't fit within this within the you know, the um, food supplement or lifestyle recommendations as well. And just, you've got quite a bit of um, options in terms of formatting here. So for example, some of this is gonna look familiar if we did the, if you were with us for the note template um, deep dive, and if not, you can find it on our YouTube page. Um, but we do in this top left-hand corner, we have placeholders. So as you see, I wrote high contact first name. So this way you can kind of personalize um, the protocol template a little bit. You can also pull up relevant information from the client's file. So if we, um, if there's information on the client's, um, you know, diet and lifestyle information in their file, if I click on diet and lifestyle, when I actually create this protocol template for a client, it's going to pull in the information that's in their client file. Okay. So we'll leave that like that and we'll see what that looks like when we create this for a client. And then you can write something here, and this could be personalized or it can be generic. Um, right here, again, we're in the protocol template, so you're probably going to want to put the information that you're giving out regularly, right? 
So again, the protocol template being that framework. So what do you find yourself saying over and over again to clients who are just getting started, right? Put that in here and then we can tweak it later. So you can also add images. So this one here is just a, again, we're not endorsing anything, um, but this is just an image that I inserted right here. I literally copied the image on, a, on the Harvard website and I pasted it right here. So they can see images to kind of give more life and bring more excitement and break up um, the recommendations a bit. You can add videos. So here is like a YouTube video from Dr. Mark Hyman. Um, so you can actually insert the video right here. So all you're going to do is click on, if you look at the second row of the text editor, there's a camera and says insert video. You're literally going to copy paste the link right here and it inserts beautifully into the, into the protocol. So if you're using protocols, how many of you are using protocols with videos? I didn't know I could, not yet, wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'd love to. So these yeah. are videos that you might want your clients to try, maybe they're videos from someone else, a, a resource that you love. It could also be a personalized video. Again, remember this is our framework. So if for example, this is our getting started protocol and we always tell people eat more greens, drink more water, eat less sugar. If those are the same things we're telling everyone, um, then maybe do a, a video that you're going to say, Hey, welcome to, you know, here, or maybe not welcome to, but you can just say, Hey, in this protocol, we're going to be working on X, Y, Z. Just give them a, a little bit more of you. Lyle says, yes, he's using them in notes. Awesome. And I think that people really like to be connected to you, right? It gives them this, this sense of being connected to you without you actually having to be there. Okay. So here too is a meditation. So I want this client or these clients who are going to get this protocol to work on meditation. Here's the example, right? Again, it's just a really quick insert from a YouTube link for your protocols as well. Um, if you are again, making the same recommendations over and over again, we have snippets to help cut down the time. Where'd my mouse go? Okay, there we go. To help cut down the time. So if I wanted to say, where's my, sorry, I've got two screens going and my mouse disappeared. There we go. If I wanted to say, all right, keep all of this so I can highlight everything I might want to reuse and maybe it's this part. And then up here, under the T in the text editor, it says save snippet. So I click save snippet and then I name this and I can just say uh, food guidelines, let's just say, right? And then save it. And then I can reuse that anytime I want. So all you'll have to do is wherever you need it, we'll click on little squiggly line, two squiggly lines, one, one two, Right, and then we would choose whatever uh, snippet that you wanted to use here. Okay, so hydration that I wanted to include. Oops. Then you would just choose whatever you want to use. Okay, so snippets, all you do is squiggly line, squiggly line, and then choose from your list here. Okay. Oops, out of that. Again, if you're making the protocol, we talked about this in other deep dives, but if you're using the protocol and you want to reference anything that's happening in your client's file, you, what, what if I think, what is my client taking? I don't remember what they're taking, or I don't remember what we talked about last session, or I don't remember certain details. You can pull it up now, right? So actually we'll do that when we get to the protocol itself, <laughs> sorry. But if I want to re um, reference something when I'm actually in the client's pr uh, protocol, I could pull up a, uh, a client hub. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so now moving on after the protocol notes, you can add a disclaimer. So if you have something that you wanna to say to your clients, like I'm not a medical doctor, this doesn't um, replace medical advice, whatever that disclaimer might be that you might wanna include, you can go ahead and add it here. So before you can find it in this disclaimer dropdown, you're first gonna add it by scrolling all the way up your page under my practice, and then disclaimers. And this is where you're gonna set up that disclaimer that says, you know, I'm not a medical doctor, or this does not replace 
uh, medical, um, medical advice, whatever that might be, okay? So you can choose from whatever protocol uh, disclaimers you've created, you can choose it here. Uh, squiggly lines, Amanda, um, should be right next to your P. So you do a shift and then the button to the right of your P uh, will be the squiggly lines. Above the bracket, the left bracket? Yeah, that works too. <laughs> uh, so Kate says, with snippets, can it be changed um, to not refresh uh, to the top of the page after inserting? Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if it does. Did it? I don't think it does. Yeah, I haven't seen that before, that it goes to the top of the page. Let me just refresh my page here. Uh, see guidelines. Oh, it does. Um, something we can look at. Definitely. Okay. All right. So now we set up our protocol name, our focus, our clients know what they're working on, how long we want them to be working on it. We put up any notes in the middle, uh, in the, in the protocol notes, and we've created a disclaimer. Okay. So now we start getting into like more structured recommendations. So food recommendations. So if you're working with food recommendations for your clients, right then you can make them here. So you would just say add another. I'm gonna edit this one here to give you an idea. And you can break your food recommendations down into foods to include, foods to exclude, and foods to reduce, okay? So you can make it, you can break it down into any of those three. For example here, um, the food recommendations eat more leafy greens. But you can be as specific or as general as you want to be or you're allowed to be within your scope right? And then you can give your clients examples, right? So here, for example, examples of leafy greens would be spinach or kale or Swiss chard or, right? And you can also give them an explanation. So the idea here is, as Shelly mentioned earlier, is give your clients all the information that they need to be successful between sessions. It also cuts down on having to actually follow up with you, right? So if they don't have to say, oh, what did you say about this, how you know, what leafy greens did you say I should eat? Or why did you say that was a good idea? We give them all the information up front. Um, it really cuts back on a lot of that, you know, follow up and just clarifying things. Um, and because we're working with note template, sorry, protocol templates, we can give extra information, right? We can give extra information because we're going to be able to reuse these recommendations later. All right, so you're not gonna be writing them from scratch each time. So you can do, you know, specific food recommendations or general, you can format them however you like. You can say eat five servings of leafy greens or some people feel, you know, some people have reported that they feel better when they eat leafy greens. You can word these however you'd like. In terms of supplements, okay? So I know not everyone's working with supplements, but if you are working with supplements, um, we have a couple options. So one is you can add your own supplements into practice better, right? Um, the other option is we have a Canadian database for supplements available. And then a third option is using a full script integration for U.S. and Canadian practitioners. Okay. So again, you would click on add another. And I'm going to edit this one. Actually, no, I'll say add another. Right. So if you're using the full script integration, you're going to see full script catalog. That's going to be where you're, be, you're going to be brought by default. So you can say like metagenics. Oops. Let's get wrong. I don't know if I have metagenics in this one. Let's go body bio. All right. So we can say this. I'm not familiar with this brand, sorry. Okay, so chlorella, for example. I want them to purchase 300 tablets. I want them to take one tablet. So here you can specify when you want them to take the, the product, what's the frequency? So I want them to take one tablet, let's say twice per day with breakfast and then with dinner, for example, okay? If you're using the full script uh, rec uh, recommendations and the full script catalog, you can actually send the reminders to your clients to refill the supplement when they get low, okay? And then you can tell, you can remind your client what's this related to maybe. So it's detoxification, right? For example. 
So when they're taking the supplement, I don't know about you, how many of you have prescribed, not prescribed, but recommended or prescribed, depending on your scope, supplements to a client, and they don't remember why they're taking it. Yes. Perfect. Happens all the time. So how do you expect your clients to follow through with something if they don't know why they're doing it? Right? So that's the reason we want to give you the op opportunity to remind them where, where they go to see their recommendations. They'll have that reminder of why exactly they're taking it. If you're not using full script, when you click on add another, you can search the Canadian database here, right? So you can search the database and choose like advanced orthomolecular research, so AOR, choose a product from here to include in your, in your recommendations and you would have the same options. So you could say, you know, one capsule or you could give a range, so one to two capsules. Um, if it's a product that's not coming from Fullscript, you also have an option to add a free form dose, right? So you might be able to, you can give them um, a very specific instruction in terms of how you want them to take it, okay? And then if you're using, again, this is for the people using supplements in their practice, but if you wanna make a supplement recommendation that's not available in Fullscript, or it's not available in the Canadian database, or you're just outside of Canada or the States, you can actually add a new supplement. So you would click on the red button in the top right corner, and you would say your supplement name. So I'm just gonna say um, vitamin C, vitamin C, right? The brand, we'll just say AOR, so it's a Canadian brand. The price is, you know, $30, right? How do you want them to take it? So maybe orally. You can put the ingredient detail here as well. And once you click on add supplement, you're gonna have all the same options that we just saw. So you can specify again, how you want your clients to take this supplement, right? When you want them to take it, how long you want them to take it for, and then why. Okay. All, the, all the recommendations that come from Fullscript are gonna have this little Fullscript badge next to them. Okay, so all of these four happen to come from Fullscript, they're gonna have this badge. But if you have products in here that don't come from Fullscript, they'll still be, um, they'll still be in the same section, they just won't have the little badge. Okay. Uh, and then the last piece here on Fullscript is that if you are using the Fullscript integration, you can have this box here checked off. So that way when you generate this protocol template for an actual client, uh, when you save it, it's going to generate the Fullscript recommendations in Fullscript at the same time and send your clients those recommendations. We'll go over that when we look at um, a protocol for a specific client. In terms of lifestyle recommendations, so we have a database of curated lifestyle recommendations that you can use. So if I say add another, you're gonna see that you can, you can choose different categories of the curated lifestyle recommendations. So if I look at, let's say mindfulness, okay? And I can choose meditate. So some of these are curated um, for you and you can use them as they are or you can modify them so they're a bit more um, in line with how you practice or how you speak to your clients or what you'd like them to do, right? So you can go ahead and tweak this if you wanted. I'm just going to say done, and it's going to be added to my lifestyle recommendations right here. Once you've added your lifestyle recommendations, think about what else you want to give your clients. What else is going to help support them while they're working through these recommendations, while they're working on whatever it is that you've um, ask them to work on from now to the time they come back. So is there anything else that's going to help them? Or is there anything else that you regularly give them with these recommendations? So whether that be, um, Shelly mentioned earlier, like a, an e-guide or meal plan or recipes or, you know, um, you know, just handouts, you can go ahead and attach those here. So you can click on the red button in the bottom right hand corner and you can say attach files. So these files are not specific to documents. They're not specific to PDFs or Word docs. You can actually upload video files as well here. You can upload audio files. 
So those video files or audio files would be able to be listened to or viewed right here within Practice Better. So if I click on here, I'm going to add a new file. And let's just say this. I don't know what the picture, but it looks delicious. All right. So this is setting up um, your protocol templates. And at any point when you're setting up a protocol template or a protocol itself, you can save your recommendations. So you can go back and reuse them. So as, as we added these recommendations, you may have noticed that there's a save recommendation button beside each recommendation. So think of this as building your recommendation database, right? So in the beginning, yes, maybe you're going to write this stuff out once, but we don't want you to have to write it out multiple times. So save every recommendation that you make, right? You can tweak the label. You can even add tags. So if this one's specific for, let's say, general health, I can add a general health tag to it. Or if it's specific to hormonal balance, I can write hormonal balance. So that way later, when I want to make a new protocol or a new protocol template, I can build that template or that protocol from saved recommendations. So I don't have to go and type things out again. I can just go in, add my saved recommendations and tweak those. So again, you can save every single type of recommendation here, right? And then for anything that you reuse in the note section, that's where you would use the snippets. Okay, so the protocols and the protocol templates, they're not auto-saving, so you're gonna wanna uh, save those periodically. So top right corner, save. So save the template so long as you're still working on it, right? Um, save it as a new protocol, right? If you wanna create it for a client now, or save it as a new template. So if you started working with, it, save it as a new template, it's basically a duplicate, okay? All right, how are we feeling about this? Natalie, uh, we have a question about the auto yeah. saving, if mm -hmm. that's gonna be added perhaps in a future update. It's definitely something on our roadmap. I don't have a timeline for it, but it's definitely on our roadmap, 100%. And then um, how do we integrate full script with Practice Better? Maybe we could show that at the end um, where they would go to do yeah, so we are in a couple of weeks actually doing a, uh, a joint webinar between Fullscript and Practice Better. So we're going to actually show you um, all these amazing enhancements that are coming to the integration. So we're going to be going through uh, kind of giving mm -hmm. an exclusive tour of that in a couple of weeks. Um, in the meantime, you can click on the red on the red button in the little gear in the top right hand corner. And under third party integration, you're going to see you're going to find the Fullscript badge and you'll be able to it'll walk you through um, integrating it with your Fullscript account. And if you don't have a Fullscript account and you're in the States or in Canada, you can still go to third-party integration and actually sign up for one. It's free. So Natalie, one more question. Um, what's the difference between a protocol and a template? Yeah, that's a good question. So the protocol itself is, is, is for one specific client, right? So it's, it's individualized for one person, whereas the protocol template is, you know, baseline recommendations that you might be um, using over and over again, right? So you might mm -hmm. have a number of protocol templates um, that you use as you need them, but that protocol itself is, means that it's been specifically created uh, for a specific client and it's only visible to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I could answer this next question. So what I'm confused about is when I create a protocol for a client and then the next se session, I want to add something to the protocol. Mm -hmm. Why does it not allow me to edit? Typically I see clients over several months and I give them new homework each time. How do you recommend doing this with the protocols? That's a great question. So let's go yeah. over to um, Mary Smith's file here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really good point. And that's something that uh, we actually took into consideration when, when we built out the protocols. So if we're in Mary Smith's file, I'm going to go to protocols and any protocols that you see here in the past um, or any protocols that you've created for in the past will be here, right? If you wanted to create a new protocol for her, you would click on the red button in the bottom right hand corner. And I'm going to get to that question, but, and choose from the templates that you've created, which one you want to use for Mary Smith. So let's say this is Mary Smith's first session. I'm giving her these um, getting started tips. And now 
everything we saw in our protocol template is already pre-populated here. So I can go in and make adjustments. Remember I said I added Mary Smith's name as a placeholder. So now her name is here. Um, and then I can tweak this, right? I can, I can add, if we talked about something very specific, I can add this to the protocol as well. Alternatively, again, as I mentioned, if Mary Smith's allergic to arugula, I can come in and just actually delete the arugula and now it's safe for Mary Smith, right? Um, if I wanted to add additional recommendations, so other things that are not already part of this protocol, but I've already made the recommendation and I've saved them, you can add them here. So you'd click on the red button in the bottom right hand corner and you'd say add saved recommendations, okay? So you're going to get a full list of all of the recommendations that you've created and saved and you can scroll through them or you can search them by tag. So if I'm looking for tags on uh, general health, only the general health ones will show up, right? Or you can search them by title and now I want to say avoid dairy and processed foods. And now they're here in my file or in my protocol for Mary Smith. Right? And the same thing goes for supplements. The same thing goes for lifestyle recommendations. So you see how, many, how much time that's going to save you. You've set it up one time and then re reuse it over, over, and over again. Okay? So when you're working in Mary Smith's file, this is something that I, I jumped ahead a little bit earlier. When I want to see what's happening with Mary Smith as I'm creating her protocol, you can click on or type shift, control, and Z and get Mary Smith's client hub here. So now as I'm working on her protocol, I can also be um, going through her file, looking at the most important information, maybe her medical history, right? Maybe I wanna look at our past session notes. Wanna see what we talked about last session, right? The other thing, maybe I wanna look at, you know, forms that she's completed. Uh, Shift control Z. Also, too, if you're not, um, if it's, you know, if you don't remember the, the sequence, when you're in the text editor, it's the second button in the top left corner. Z, <laughs> type like Z, zebra. Um, so it's the second button in the top left hand corner. So open client hub. So I'll get a second one here. Okay, so you can move this around, right? Minimize it um, and just use it as you need it. So it's just gonna be really helpful in, in accessing past information. All right, so again, these protocols are not auto-saving, so just um, you know, click in the top right-hand corner, save them as a draft if you're still working on them periodically. If you didn't start with a protocol template, you just actually started creating a protocol for Mary Smith and you thought, wow, this is amazing and I could use this for someone else, you can actually save it as a template. So you can always start with a template and then create a protocol specific to a client or you can start with a protocol specific to a client and then generate that as a template. Okay. When so, you're ready, to, oh, go for it. Oh, somebody was asking if you can delete a saved recommendation. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to show you how to manage those actually. And so you'll be able to delete them um, and go in and edit them as well. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get there, so you can save your protocols and publish them, which means you're sharing them with your clients. So clients who have access to, client, uh, to the client portal will get a notification, right? They'll get a notification letting them know that you've published a protocol for them to log in and view it. So we'll say save and publish, okay? And again, remember we talked about when we set up the protocol template, we talked about Fullscript. We talked about if you're using Fullscript, we could also generate the Fullscript recommendations at the same time, so long as we check mark that little box. So when we say save and publish, thinking here, uh, when we say save and publish, already at this point, your client will have received an email letting them know that this protocol is available to them. The full script counterpart will automatically have been created in full script. So if you logged into your full script account now, um, these four supplement recommendations that we made from Fullscript would be there in a new protocol. And your client would have received an email from Fullscript telling them to purchase their supplements. 
So just think about how many steps. Now you don't have to draft the email to tell your clients that this stuff is available. You don't have to go and duplicate it in Fullscript if you're using Fullscript. Um, you don't have to go ahead and um, you don't have to go and send them the notifications to go and purchase them. All right. So as some as as one of you already brought up, these protocols now that we've created them are read only. Okay. So. I'm going to show you what it looks like to the client and show you why it's important, you know, or why it's a good idea to put the extra time into creating the templates. So you can give a little bit more, like I said, personality, you can break it up for the client. So it's easy for them to understand. Again, if you had that welcome video, they could be looking at, you know, watching you and listening to you talk to them about what they're going to be starting. Um, if you do have a video here, so let's, that snippet. Um, if you do have a video here, I'm just going to turn the volume off, but they could be watching the video, right? Um, and then they're going to go through the recommendations. They're clearly, um, they're clearly organized. So foods to include, all right, these are the foods that I recommended that they include in their diet. Foods to reduce, these are the ones that I recommended that they reduce, and also why. And then foods to exclude, if there were any, there are um, would be here. So they're all, they're all organized according to include, reduce, or exclude. Next in the list, you're going to see lifestyle recommendations. So the lifestyle recommendations that you made, the supporting documents. So this one here happens to be a meal plan. Um, it's from that clean life. So you can include a meal plan so your clients can go in and get some sort of inspiration um, about what they're going to eat according to the recommendations that you gave them so they can go through this, you know, view it here or download it. And then the other piece is the supplement recommendations. So not only are we going to give your clients the supplement recommendations, but we're also going to generate a table for them. So it's really clear to them how, when, and why they're taking something, right? So they don't have to be if you just give them a list of the supplements to take, it's really easy to overlook something. It's really easy not to take it properly. It's really easily not to take it at the right time. And as we know, that matters, right? It can affect their outcomes. It can affect how they feel. Um, so this can be downloaded. So they can click download in the top right hand corner. You can also click download in the top right hand corner and they can print out a PDF of it and stick it on their fridge if they wanted to. So when Shelly talked about formatting in the beginning of this uh, deep dive, this was one of the pieces, right? How many of you um, have in the past created tables for your clients for their supplement recommendations? Carol, I have Kate. Yes. All right. Yep. Yeah. So this is, takes a lot of time. If you know, Anything about, well, I mean, I'm not very tech savvy. So when I make a table and I go to remove a recommendation, all the formatting is off. So you don't have to worry about that. It's all completely generated for you. It's really clear for you and your clients. All right. So Natalie, um, Amanda had a great question. So she was wondering why would you use notes versus a protocol for a client? Like what would be the difference and why use one over the other? Okay, so that's a great question. There's no right or wrong. That's honestly, there's no right or wrong. Um, the protocols might, it depends. It really depends on how you want to work. You can absolutely use the notes section if you want to use that for the recommendations for your clients. Um, the protocols just tend to be a little bit more um, robust. And I find just, at least I find in, you know, those of you using protocols can, can let me know as well, but you're able to save more. So um, whereas in a note, you might be saving using snippets um, to save like sections, like in, pra in the practice better protocols, you can actually save individual recommendations and they're easier to access. Well, also if you're using supplements, you're, if you are integrating with full script, you have that feature in the protocol and then, you know, it'll create in the this table it'll create the table, um, but you can also, Amanda, attach a protocol to your session notes. Mm -hmm. So you can just take your notes from the session in notes, but then attach the protocol to it 
and maybe even create just a section at the bottom that you would share with the client that's just kind of a high level like summary and then say, please see attached protocol. Um, right. But it saves a lot of time if you have a protocol template that you can just tweak for the client and attach to your session notes. Right. And that's too, like you, you probably, you well not probably, but you may be seeing the same sort of cases over and over again. Right. So, you know, like Shelly said, it's easier to just say, see, just see um, attached protocol. And then again, that framework is already built out for you and you're just making, you know, small, small modifications. So when talking about modifications, as we said that these protocols, now that they've been saved and published, they're read only. So we can't edit them, right? There's no edit button here. Um, so what you can do is you can duplicate it and then build on. And we do recommend this, and, and this is, was part of our thinking when we created this, was you probably, you and your clients probably want some sort of history of where they started and where they are now. So instead of, instead of overriding uh, what you've already recommended, we say duplicate it and then make the changes here. So we can just say uh, getting started part two, or you can change the title. I'm just going to say part two so it's very easy to see that it's a continuation maybe week two or week four, whatever it might be, maybe the focus has changed, right? Maybe we're looking at, maybe they're really struggling with cutting out sugar. So now the focus is cutting out sugar, right? We want them to do this for another two weeks and maybe we're not going to remove everything that they've already worked on, but maybe we're gonna add on to it, right? So you can go ahead and tweak, maybe they don't need this anymore, right? You can just delete what they don't need and then make any modifications needed to the food recommendation. So maybe here now we're looking at, um, actually let's do a saved recommendation. Uh, I'll just say protein. So maybe we're saying include good source of protein in every meal. So maybe we're adding on, and this is a really great way to, to see how they've progressed, where they started, what were the beginning recommendations and what are they, you know, what are you adding on or taking off? Because if you come back to your session with your client and your client says, listen, I, this was just too much. I, I wasn't able to do X, Y, Z. Well, then maybe you, you know, maybe you, you take some out, right? Maybe you strip it down a little, maybe you take out the processed foods, right? And avoid dairy and you focus on just a couple of things. Or if you want to add on now you add on. So the initial recommendations may or may not change, um, but we can build on. And now we have, we have the, um, the full history. So if we look back at their protocols, now we have the getting started and now we have the getting started part two or the continuation. Does that make sense? For the so, person who asked about um, editing protocols. Yeah. So um, Megan was asking, how do you carry a table over to the next protocol? So say you duplicate it, how, do you, how does the supplement protocol get carried over? And then can you add a new supplements to it? Yeah, so that's exactly the same. You just use the duplicate function and everything in here is gonna be the same with the modifications that you've made. So if I added a new supplement, now it would be wherever it is that you placed it in the list. Mm -hmm. um, if you remove supplements, now those would be omitted. And then Cheryl asks, is there a way or a plan to include a way to mark a recommendation complete or give it a status? Um, not at the moment. That's, good. That's a good uh, question. Uh, not at the moment. Um, what would... So Cheryl, what sort of thing would be marked as complete? Because it's not, um, I think typically, maybe you will maybe want to use a task for that because the protocols are more along the lines of ongoing. So it's what they're working on uh, continuously. And then if they're done with that protocol, then you could just issue a new protocol for whatever they're working on next, which would, I think, indicate that the first one was complete. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
Um, while she's answering that, just letting you know if you click on the three dots next to any of your protocols. So you have that duplicate function, as we mentioned, you can send a reminder if your client, you know, if you, if you want to remind them to take a look at their protocol, you can open it in the hub again, like we looked at the client hub. So I can open this protocol in the hub while I'm navigating through Mary Smith's file. Um, and then you can also fax it, right? So on the paid plans, you can fax. And so what you would click on fax to, and if you needed to share this with a provider, you needed to share this with someone, you can click fax to, put the appropriate number in, who's receiving the fax, and a little message about this protocol. All right. Um, is there anything else here? Okay, and then you can archive or delete your protocols that you've created for a client. So archiving it is going to remove it from the client's view in the client file, um, but it's not going to delete it. So, you, right? So you're still going to have a record of it. Deleting it will, yes, you won't have a record of it anymore. So once you've archived a protocol, you'll see a little tab at the top up here. It's called Archive Protocols, and you can go in and see the long history of protocols anything that's been archived. Um, Cheryl, in your case, this might be a good way to say that the protocol is done is by archiving it, but just keep in mind that it means that look, it's not gonna be visible to the client anymore. All right. Okay, so, so we asked about how to manage our saved recommendations, okay? So under my practice, let's go back to protocol templates. Okay, so when we're in protocol templates, we also have this recommendations tab at the top, right under where it says protocol templates and recommendations. There's recommendations here, and this is a list of all of my protocols. Okay, so I can change the order of them, I can go in and edit them, right? Um, or I can delete them. Okay, delete them. Um, oh, edit the title or tag. So this is where you're going to manage these. So if you needed to delete them, you had a duplicate, you could go ahead and do that. I hope that answered the question about um, editing these recommendations. So there's another recommendation that um, you may have noticed in the platform called lifestyle recommendations, and it is, an it is independent of protocols, okay? So you may have noticed under my practice, there is this lifestyle recommendation section. And this is the database of lifestyle recommendations, okay? So here you can find all the curated lifestyle recommendations. You can edit them so that way they're going to be in your words and you can also add to them, okay? So lifestyle recommendations has its own um, independent area because sometimes you might want to suggest to your clients to work on something without necessarily uh, generating a protocol for them, right? So maybe you're just saying to your client, drink more water, right? Or maybe you're just saying, go to bed earlier, okay? So you can click on the red button in the bottom right-hand corner, and you can view the curated recommendations by clicking on the bottom one, right? And then you can find, you can, on the right-hand side, you'll see the different categories. So let's say I want to add detox uh, let's say dry skin brush daily before showering. So you can say add it to my favorites. And now it's in your list of favorites here. So you can go in and tweak it and change it and write exactly what it is that you wanted to say about um, dry skin brushing before taking a shower. Okay. And then if you wanted to recommend one of these, rec one of these lifestyle recommendations to a client, you would say recommend a client. So you'll choose from the list who you want to share it with. And let's say Mary Smith. And now Mary Smith is going to see this in her client portal. And we'll take a look at that um, in just a minute. Yeah, so one thing um, that I've done with clients in the past, just to, you know, gauge how they're doing with the protocol prior to a session, mm -hmm. um, I just created a you know, a quick check-in form um, with some questions about how they're doing on the protocol, how they feel, what's working, what challenges they're experiencing, like what support do they need as a health coach. I want to make sure that I 
hone in on that during our session. So you could create a little progress report about the protocol and set up an automation to have that sent maybe two or three days prior to the session. I found that to be very helpful. Well, that's a really good tip. I like that. Yeah. I like that one a lot. All right. So before we move over to the client side and take a look at what exactly it is that the client's going to see, um, is there anything in the setting up of protocols or understanding how to use protocols? Um, any questions anyone has? Well, uh, Paz is asking what, it, what the protocol would look like in the client hub. Oh, in the client hub. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So let's look at, let's go to Mary Smith. Um, and just, if ever you see your client's name in a list like this and you see this little icon beside it, that's just open client hub, okay? So let's look at a protocol. So we did this getting started um, part two protocol. So this is what it looks like in the client hub. So still really nice and easy to, to read. You don't get the table in the client hub, um, but you still get all the information here. And then we're gonna go take a look at what it looks like in the client portal as well. All right. Shelly, did you see any other questions? Um, sorry, I've been... Yeah, I'm, I'm answering. A lot of them I'm, I've been answering. Let's okay, see. perfect. So let's, uh, while you're doing that, I'm going to hop uh -huh. over into the client um, file. Uh -huh. And we'll take a look at what this looks like for the clients. I can answer. So one, somebody's asking, what's the difference between the hub and the portal? Um, so the hub is just a little window that pops up and it stays open. So you can be doing other things like taking notes, doing a telehealth session, um, doing what you would be doing in the portal, but you can have the hub open so you can reference other information without having to have two different windows open or screens. So it just makes it convenient to reference clients' information or past information or their record while you're taking notes or having a session with the client. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then the client file or the client, was it the client record? Um, sorry, the client. <laughs> the portal, yeah. Yeah, the client portal is where your clients actually log in, where they go to see um, every all the resources that you shared with them, right? So. Right now, we're looking at the client portal. So at the top of their page, if they have a protocol that you've, um, that you've published for them, they're going to see that here. So they would have also received a reminder, email letting them know that, they received, that, that you published a protocol for them so they could log into and see it. They're also gonna see a little um, notification at the bell up here. So I've created a new protocol for you to review. Mm -hmm. So they can click on the protocol and see the full protocol that we created they can also scroll down the page and just see a short overview of the protocol. So this is kind of just, this doesn't give them quite as much detail. It'll just give them the foods to include, foods to reduce sort of thing, um, and the recommendations, but it won't give them the explanation as to why. And then in terms of the supplements, it gives it to them in more of like a timeline manner as opposed to having the table, but it's still all organized according to when you want them to take it. So if you wanted to view the full protocol, you can click on view protocol in the bottom right corner, or you can actually just click on the protocol at the top of the page. So here, again, this is the exact same thing that we saw on the client side, uh, on the practitioner side, um, but this is the client's view. So they can download the protocol again and print it out. So they have, just like we saw on your side, they have access to that same table that clearly organizes their supplements if you're working with supplements right, the, uh, the supporting documents that are here, that they can view them or download them, their lifestyle recommendations and their food recommendations. And these food recommendations are the complete ones, unlike what we saw on the, on the homepage of the client portal. And if you are using the full script integration, you can click on supplements here, and it's gonna actually bring them right to the page, um, to the full script page where they can purchase their supplements. So they're gonna click on it, they're gonna to have to log into Fullscript and they can order those supplements and have them delivered right to their house. So Natalie, once the client reviews the protocol, does it disappear from their dashboard? No, no, it's gonna stay there until you've replaced it uh, with a new protocol. 
So it'll stay here. Um, and then if they wanted to see like past protocols, they could click on protocols in the, in the left hand menu here. So here they will see any past protocols that you've created for them that haven't either been archived or deleted. So it's going to stay, the, the most recent protocol is always going to stay at the top of their page like this. Um, and when we went back to the lifestyle recommendations, like the, either lifestyle recommendations that are created in a protocol or lifestyle recommendations that you've created independent of a protocol, those are going to cycle through the top right-hand corner here, right? So we said use a potty stool as part of, I think, a part of this recommendation, this protocol. So now that's gonna cycle through the top right-hand corner. And the idea here is that if your clients are logging into the portal and they do just one thing, let's just bring their focus to one easy thing that they can do, um, just as a little reminder. So again, these lifestyle recommendations are lifestyle recommendations that have been um, recommended as part of a protocol or independent of a protocol. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Uh, so somebody, Cheryl's asking, how did you add the daily lifestyle focus? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we just, we, yeah, Cheryl, I think, uh, I hope we answered, I answered your question when I said that it goes from, it comes from either the, pro, the lifestyle recommendations that you've added in the protocol or from the independent lifestyle recommendation. All right. Um, and, and just, you know, kind of just as an overview to let you know, again, the idea is we want to give them as much information as we can so they have it when they leave, right? So they have everything that they need. They don't have to be saying, you know, Shelly, what is it that you said about how much, again, did you say I should, right? So give them all the information you can. And because a lot of these recommendations, you know, should be, or all of them as you create them should be part of your your new saved recommendation database, you can take the time to be really thorough and give them really great um, information because you're just gonna write it one time and then you're gonna reuse it time after time. So, you know, sometimes when we're in a hurry because we're seeing, you know, we know it can be a lot of work to see clients, we might do things fast, but then it ends up meaning that it's gonna take us more time in the long run because people are gonna have more questions. So, Go ahead, you can, when you create it the first time, put as much detail as you need. You can always tweak it and take any, in any information that you don't need out. Um, and yeah. Yeah, so Deb is asking, can we see the client view from our side, kind of a view as feature? And we recommend, Deb, that you set up a test client, set yourself up as a test client by inviting yourself, if you have a secondary email, and really testing out the client features, you know, request, booking sessions, um, journaling, reviewing your protocols to really, you know, get a feel for what the clients are seeing and experiencing. That way, you know, if they have questions that, and they're asking you, you can easily help them find what they're looking for. And, you know, then you just are, are experiencing it as a client. So that, that's probably the best way to see it from their side. Yeah, I completely agree. And also too, because as you're, as you're working with a platform in different areas, it's a good idea to kind of run through it and know, you know, if you're working with, if you're checking the booking or if you're checking the food and mood journals, or if you're creating a program, all of those things, we definitely recommend that you, um, you know, take the opportunity to try it out as the client as well. Um, Kate asked, uh, when would you archive a protocol? Because I'm trying to think of a reason and I'm coming up blank. So in my own experience, I would archive something if I made, I created a protocol and either maybe I had a typo, I had a mistake in it, and I needed to fix it. So I would duplicate it and publish the new protocol, but archive the old one. So the client didn't need to see the old one, the one with the mistake um, or the one I changed my mind about, um, but I still wanted to have a record of it. So that's, I think, um, that was my personal use for archiving protocols. But I'm sure there are other instances as well. Um, so this is, I'm going to log back into the practitioner portal here. 
Um, just as a quick review here, in terms of uh, Leandro was asking about deleting saved recommendations, and I saw this um, come up again from someone else, so I'm going to just do it again quickly. So under my practice, when you're in your protocol template, you have rec a recommendations tab at the top in this white bar, this white menu bar. So click on recommendations and this will be your list of, of um, all your saved recommendations. So you can either click on the three dots um, and edit the titles and edit the tag, right? Or you can just click on edit and this is gonna actually let you edit the recommendation itself. Uh, or you can delete them or duplicate them. So this is where you're gonna manage your saved recommendations. Uh, we cannot edit a protocol. No, you can duplicate the protocol and make the edits there. All right, let's, I'm going to scroll up here and see if there are any, I know I missed a bunch, but we're going to see um, if I can find any that we didn't talk about. In the meantime, if there are any questions that you, yeah. that were pressing that you really wanted to um, cover regarding the protocols or the recommendations, you can type it again if we if we miss it. Um, yeah, someone someone had asked if um, you can change the categories of the protocol, like making you know your own titles for the different sections. Yeah, so, not at the moment. It's something we're looking at. Um, I do I do think that that will be available in time, but I don't have a timeline on it at the moment. So do you have an example of the welcome video somewhere, the video for clients? Oh, I don't. Um, I don't, but I mean, it could be anything. It could even be 30 seconds. I find that clients really like to see you. Um, so it could just be like, you know, just saying, hey, you know, in this protocol, we're talking about, again, like eating more greens and eating less sugar and, you know, check out the recipes I've attached to get some inspiration on new meals to try. You know, it could be that simple. It doesn't have to be anything all too scripted, just kind of giving them a, an idea of what's coming up in the protocol. All right, let me scroll down. Okay, so if I duplicate a protocol and then add another supplement, will it make the full script recommendation within full script? for just that one new supplement or will it create a full script recommendation for all the supplements? That's a great question. Um, so let's, you have the option to do both actually. So let's duplicate Mary Smith's protocol here. All right. So if I go in and I add a new supplement recommendation, let's just say I added a new supplement recommendation. It's adrenal mend. So when I, I can go into the other supplements, the ones that I don't want to include again, and I can just say exclude this supplement from my full script treatment plan. So this means that only the ones that don't have that checkbox, well, that's not a food rec, uh, supplement recommendation, but only the ones that have not been excluded will be um, generated. Why do I keep doing that? Sorry. I keep going to foods. Um, Will be, will be generated in the new recommendation. So exclude supplement is what you're gonna look for. All right. Is it safe to say that a protocol is the list of all actions you want them to be focused on at this time? So if they have to manage blood sugar protocol, template optimize digestion, protocol template, and I want them to be doing parts of each this week, then we need to pull from each of them into the current protocol. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I, Cheryl, that's exactly what I would say. So um, I would recommend, again, this is just what my recommendation is, but I would recommend creating a protocol with the different parts. So exactly, if you just want them to do bits and pieces of each protocol, that's why saving the recommendations and then adding the tags will be easier to create a protocol uh, with a combination of recommendations from different ones. So I would definitely recommend creating one protocol with all the stuff that you want them to be working on right now. So let's think about it as their homework. That's a really great question. Um, okay, so do you also have archive function for past client records? Um, no, we don't. Deactivate. 
Yeah, we have, you know, we don't have, you don't have, we, yeah, like Shelly oh. said, you, no, you're right, Shelly. You can deactivate clients um, so that they don't have access to the client portal anymore. Um, but there is no archive function. I guess that would be the same. All right, so how are we feeling? Who here is excited about creating a new protocol template? <laughs> yes, me, me, uh, uh, Shantiana, Carolyn. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Perfect. We've got a lot of people. Kind of nervous. nervous. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous do at it. all. And, that, <laughs> and like Shelly mentioned, create a test client so you can send it to your test client right? And see what it looks like before you send it to a real client so that you can get rid of those nerves. Um, but you know what? I think all my clients that I, when I was working with clients, they were always impressed um, because they don't typically get recommendations like this. Like they really don't typically get recommendations like this. Um, so for those of you who haven't been using recommendations yet, let us know how it goes. Let us know what they say. Uh, this, Lynn, are you using um, are you using the protocols? Not yet. Yeah. Yeah, and you can you can if you have yourself as a test client, you can you know set up some sample protocols and assign them to yourself. Just kind of go through the process and play around. If you're nervous and you want to test it out. Um, I would recommend, you know, just creating a few test protocols for yourself. Yeah. Kara says she uses them all the time. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So I've been making a printed booklet and a large PDF of all recommendations and then get radio silence sometimes. So start, I'm going to start incorporating protocols instead. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And then again, you, you know, you can, you can play around with how much you want to give them, right? You can start little and then add on. Um, I think one thing we've, we've noticed, um, Shelly and I have talked about before is, you know, we, we forget how much we know yeah, <laughs> and we exactly. forget yeah. that, that our clients are like really starting at, you know, at point zero. So what we think is pretty basic, um, it's a lot for them. Um, all right. So the idea is to really create lots of good recommendation templates and that can quickly be added to a protocol for each follow-up session. Absolutely, Megan. Absolutely. All right, I'm getting excited to set these up. Uh, it's, I think it's, a pow it's powerful and will be very impressive to clients, plus will save me a ton of time. Yes, everything, we just want you to save time. <laughs> um, amazing, Lynn, I agree. Perhaps better super professional platform. Amazing. I'm so happy to hear. I'm so happy to hear that you guys are excited to use this. Um, is there anything else before we wrap up that you guys wanted to chat about uh, pertaining to the protocols or recommendation? All right. So if you have any other questions, you can shoot us an email to help at practicebetter.io. Uh, this email or this replay will go out to you tomorrow. Um, and then also too, if you don't mind taking two minutes at the end of, or even just like 30 seconds at the end of this, you're going to get a poll, which lets us know what else you guys want to learn about. Um, and then we can, and then we can schedule that for you. All right. Thank you everyone so much. Thank you. Have an awesome day. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.